All right, guys, here we are today looking at the motion of a Frisbee. Uh, so here I am throwing the Frisbee outside of my dorm. You'll notice it has a pretty constant velocity until it hits that fence. Um, so what I did was I took this video with my iPhone, and then I brought it into this program that we all know, Tracker. Uh, and the first thing I did was I trimmed the video. The video originally was, you know, 20, uh, or, you know, rather, uh, you know, maybe five seconds long. Uh, but I trimmed it to get the part where the Frisbee is only in motion. So from this black arrow to this black arrow. Um, and then what I did was I placed a uh, calibration stick on the frisbee. I knew that the frisbee was originally eight and a half inches in diameter, and therefore by doing that, tracker then knows the positions and distances of everything. Um, so then the next thing to do was to place this Cartesian coordinate plane on the start of my object, therefore uh, signifying the starting position R0. However, if this position were to move, um, that would affect A, your initial position, and your velocity of the object, assuming that the time it takes is going to be the same. However, by leaving, or I guess if you don't alter that, um, you can assume that your object is moving at a constant velocity and moving with the constant velocity in the x direction. So then the next thing I did was I went to tracks, new, point mass, and I clicked frame by frame the center of the object to graph its position as a function of time. And it's cool because Tracker will allow you to actually do it frame by frame and get that data. So here is that track of my object. You see it's pretty, you know, horizontal, you know, motion in the x direction. Uh, a little bit here in the y direction, a little bit of velocity. That's due to real net forces. Um, in this diagram, in this actual real, wor real world scenario, we have forces like lift, air resistance, drag, and gravity all working on this, this object. So that's why we see a little bit of deviation here in the y direction. But for the most part, that doesn't matter for this lab because we're only looking at the x, uh, the, uh, x direction of motion, which is plotted here on this graph. Uh, so it's pretty linear, as you see. So that means it has a pretty constant velocity uh, for the window which I was looking. However, I wanted to make a prediction uh, with the computer model uh, Python. So I used the momentum principle uh, and the information of my object uh, to make uh, that prediction. I assumed here, though, that the net forces were zero on the object which is a big assumption to really make because as we saw in the video, there were some net forces. You see that little deviation right there. So if I go ahead and I run that module, um, you will see the video representation of what exactly happens with that ball. So here you go, and there's the graph, and you know you see the ball's motion. So this here is obviously its time, and this is the object's position. You'll see it's perfectly linear, and that was because there was no net forces or you know, had a perfectly constant velocity from the start to the finish. Um, so then what I did was I used the information from this graph, uh, from this Python script, to create a CSV file, which is basically the position values as a function of time. The same exact thing that that track allowed me to do right over here. So I took the, all of that information and I put it into this Excel file. And if you see here, I've got all of this information, right? And I put that into a graph. See, the blue line is representative of my observed data, of the me throwing the physical from tracker. And you'll see that that's not quite linear. If you look at the R squared value, that's 0 .99, 0 .99894 rather. And if you look at the R squared value of the observed uh, of the predicted data, it is very very close to one. And it actually is basically a perfect thing, except for the acceleration that it took to get up to constant velocity. However, the reason why there are differences between these is because this first one incorporated changes, or not changes, but differences in the net force. The net force on this first one was not constant. You see all these little variations in the velocity. Whereas in the predicted, uh, uh, pre pre predicted velocity, it was constant, very, very constant. The slope was 7.0785 meters per second. You know, as we know from our calculus, the slope is just the position over time, so that's the slope of this line. So if you look here, you know, that's, that's what's happening. There are real forces. However, this prediction is pretty darn good um, at estimating the, the you know, position as a function of time of our Frisbee. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you found it informative and you know, maybe useful. If you want to go and you know, track your own things, I encourage you to be an endeavor. You go you know, find your own stuff to do. But uh, it's pretty cool, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, you know, just, I guess, let me know somehow. So. All right, everybody take care, y'all.